Hey folks, Sugar Lump here, and this video will be an episode where we locate the BF of this polar curve called a cardioid. What in the world is a cardioid? Well, if you've heard cardio from the word, then it should appear to you that the curve is shaped like a heart. How this curve is drawn is similar to drawing a cycloid, but instead of rolling a circle on a line, we roll a circle on another circle and trace. I guess you can do that by rolling two dimes on a flat surface and then you imagine the thing being drawn. But hey, if you want to quote unquote draw a precise cardioid, you can shine a light on top of a mug and there you'll see the reflection create that pattern. Cool, right? This thing just seems to appear in a lot of math that even Mandelbrot can say the same. But despite the fun facts about this curve, its shape and features all boil down to the polar function of r of theta equals 1 plus sine of theta. Because we have a function that defines the cardioid, we are able to mathematically locate its pseudofoci using the new 3-step rule we derived last episode. The 3SR is an algebraically tedious process, so I decided I should zoom through the algebraic parts in this vid. Anyhow, let's get into it. Like always, I start my 3SR by first converting the trig functions cosine theta and sine theta to the simple letters of z and s, and then convert the notations of r of theta, r prime of theta, r double prime of theta, and r triple prime of theta to r, r prime, r double prime, and r triple prime, in order to keep my algebra clean. After we convert our variables, we are free to evaluate the derivatives of our polar function, which in shorthand is written as r equals 1 plus s. These three derivatives are fairly simple because we're just differentiating trig functions. Doing so will result in the derivatives of r prime equals c, r double prime equals negative s, and r double prime equals negative c. And so we can wrap it up for step 1. Next, we advance to step 2 where we take all these r's and replace them into this long equation, the long equation that basically yields solutions for the evolute parameter in step 3. By plugging each r into this long equation, it will give us this long boy. This long boy. Since I stated earlier that I'll zoom through the algebra, here are the consecutive algebra steps that prompted me to start a killing spree towards paper. Eventually, this algebra squeezes to c times 1 plus s equals 0, which are two products equaling 0. This means we can separate those solutions to c equals 0 and 1 plus s equals 0. Before we evaluate these two solutions, it is important to note that the cardioid is drawn optimally through the angles of 0 to 2 pi, because 2 pi onwards is just redrawing the same curve. This serves as an intuition to the fact that we should restrict our solutions in that domain. Therefore, by evaluating these solutions, we will finally acquire the solutions of pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, which wraps it up for step 2. Alright, now let's talk about the new step 2.1. The purpose of this step is to check whether a solution is extraneous or not. And here's how you do it. First thing we have to do is rewrite this condition equation with the derivatives we have. Doing so will result to this. After spilling much ink to my paper, this equation will simplify to 1 plus s equals 0, which represents the extraneous condition. What follows after rewriting is that we plug our solutions of pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 to that equation. Let's try pi over 2 first. If we plug in pi over 2 to this s right here, our equation turns to 1 plus 1 equals 0. Obviously, this equation here is not true. And because it is not true, the solution pi over 2 is not extraneous, meaning this solution exists and is free to move on to step 3. Next, we do the same process to 3 pi over 2. Real quick, Plugging that into the s of the equation, we will get 1 minus 1 equals 0. Since plugging in 3 pi over 2 satisfies this equation, the solution is deemed fake and extraneous. 
and must be thrown away. So all in all, only Pyro 2 gets a way for us to use in step 3. Speaking of, let us now take our consecutive derivatives and plug them into this long parameter that represents the evolute. By doing so, the evolute parameter will look like this. After another genocide towards mere paper kind, the parameter reduces to 1 plus s, c comma s minus 2 thirds times 2 cs plus c comma s plus s squared minus c squared. Fun fact! When you plot this parameter, the cardioid's evolute will look like this, a smaller, babby cardioid. Specifically, it's three times as small. For intuition, consider the fact that the parameter is literally the cardioid parameter minus two-thirds of this parameter, which makes one-third of something. It kind of makes sense. We'll get a cardioid that is one-third of that size. Now that you are more familiar with the cardioid, let us now plot the point when the evolute is at pi over 2. By doing so, it will yield the point 0 2 thirds, and 0 2 thirds is the point located at the cuspy portion of the baby cardioid, which suggests that we have a pseudofocus. But to confirm that it is, let us draw the line that connects 0 2 thirds to its vertex on the main cardioid. If we draw any other line besides this, those other lines would all be shorter than the line on 0 2 thirds. By using higher forms of jargon, we could say that the magnitude of the vector connecting the cardioid and its evolute reaches an extrema when this vector is at 0 2 thirds, which confirms that the point is indeed the pseudofocus and that pi over 2 is a real solution. Now, let's change the premise. What if we plugged in 3 pi over 2 to the evolute instead? If we did, the parameter would yield 0, 0. But there's a twist involved. Because this point is actually a hole in the evolute. Why is that? Well, other than 3 pi over 2 being a fake solution, the cardioid's evolute parameter actually has a does not exist condition that I did not bother mentioning. Here's what I mean. When I was simplifying the evolute parameter, there was a time when the fraction was 2 plus 2s over 3 plus 3s. From there, I cancelled a 1 plus s on both top and bottom, reducing it to 2 thirds. As you may know from rational functions, cancelling that factor leaves the condition of 1 plus s not equal to 0 for the evolute parameter. Obviously, this circles back to step 2.1, where we proved that 3 pi over 2 is not legit. Since the evolute at 3 pi over 2 is 0, 0, the point is not legit, thus a hole. But you know what? Even though 0, 0 is a failure of a point, this guy still inherits the pseudofocus property of having a minimum vector. If all other vectors are drawn, these vectors would be bigger than the zero vector on zero zero. Before we end this video, I want to occupy a few extra minutes to resolve something I dismissed last episode. This concerns the step 2.1 condition we derived last episode. Here it is. The existence of a step 2.1 condition should also apply to the functional 5SR and parametric 3SR. If I were to go back and implement this condition, each would look like this. But the reason I did not include them is because I wasn't aware yet about extraneous conditions and rational functions despite knowing about them. In other words, that translates to, whoops, I didn't know, so it ain't my fault. Just kidding, it is. Since I just knew about these conditions, it is clear to me now that the pf at the function of x to the power of 2 thirds does not exist, and so are those pfs on the values of the cycloid by proof of step 2.1. So a piece of advice. I recommend that step 2.1 be used only when there's a suspicious cusp on the original curve, like you see in the cardioid. So in summary, consider step 2.1 as an optional step if you think you will come across extraneous solutions for the pseudofocus. And there you have it. A long short 
color example video with some clarification. I hope I didn't shed off too many details on my brief presentation or say too much during the clear up. But all in all, I bet you at least have some minor understanding of the new step 2.1 condition and got some mind food out of it. So thanks for watching and keep mathing, folks. <laughs>